Lawmakers only have a few more days to consider those resolutions, as well as a load of other legislation still up for debate. After a marathon of legal wrangling, lawmakers have tried to tackle a number of issues from the insurance crisis to social hot topics. Here's a look at some of the key pieces of legislation that passed and what else could still be in play. After a months-long effort, the 2024 legislative session is coming to a close with major wins for Louisiana's GOP. <laughs> Governor Jeff Landry outlined his goals in his opening address at the beginning of session, pushing the issues of education, insurance, and a potential constitutional convention to the forefront. Though his plans drew a lot of criticism from the left, right-wing Republicans largely supported his agenda. We want to be more like competitive states. The states of these insurance companies are looking to deploy their capital. Homeowners insurance was one of the largest issues that lawmakers tackled early on in the session. Louisiana's newest insurance commissioner, Tim Temple, backed a slew of business-friendly legislation that, according to him, would increase competition in Louisiana's dwindling insurance landscape. Temple's package had four main bills. Senate Bill 322, House Bill 611, Senate Bill 484, and House Bill 120. There are several additional ideas and proposals before you this session to address this insurance crisis. I would urge you to listen carefully to this debate, these debates, read the bills, and arrive at solutions that are fair to the consumer. The bills drew lots of controversy from Democratic lawmakers who argued that they didn't see how bills loosening restrictions would solve the insurance crisis or benefit consumers. It still is a, of, of a real concern to me that, that everything is done to favor the insurance industry with no guarantees that is going to lead to a reduction in rates. And I, I'm just, I'm looking for that assurance from someone that, or somewhere that can give us that assurance. The bills advanced through the House and the Senate before heading straight for the governor's desk, where he signed them into law. It seemed like support for it kind of fluctuated as we right. progressed. What were the main concerns um, of lawmakers, whatever they were thinking about passing this bill? So the main concerns, I think one of the uh, major concerns was cost. Uh, I think it had a lot of promise in terms of what it might be able to do and get people out of failing schools or schools that just don't even fit. But how much was this going to cost? At one point, experts who studied the bill said it could cost the state up to $500 million. It's still unclear exactly how much the program will ultimately cost at this time. So what they did essentially was punt the question over to um, the K-12 board, Bessie, to try and figure out how are we going to roll this out, what are the rules going to be, go establish a process, let us know who's going to come in at what time and how much uh, it's going to cost. Another amendment that would have required private schools receiving ESA funds to be assigned letter grades based on test scores was rejected. How long would that process take? That's a great question. Uh, I, I think a lot of people have those questions. How long that takes, I don't know. Another amendment that would have required private schools receiving ESA funds to be assigned letter grades based on test scores was rejected. But perhaps the biggest conversation this session was the governor's attempt to shift the balance of power to Louisiana's executive branch. Governor Landry backed bills that called for a constitutional convention, a shield on public records, and gave him the ability to appoint members to Louisiana's Board of Ethics. You have this board that's supposed to be independent that is there to serve as a check uh, and enforce the ethics rule on a state that has a history of corruption, uh, and I think that's going to get undermined. So. Lawmakers supported the ethics bill to give Landry the power to make those appointments, despite him being the center of an ethics violation case brought on by the same board. In addition to the big ticket items, there were a number of measures mirroring Republican pushes on a national scale. That includes a series of proposals dealing with women's health, LGBTQ plus issues, and other classroom-related topics. One of the most prominent bills Landry signed would restrict access to two abortion pills, mifepristone and misoprostol. Doctors warned that restricting access adds red tape that would complicate care for pregnant women. The bill still passed both chambers with overwhelming support despite pushback. Republican lawmakers also pushed through a series of bills targeting the LGBTQ plus community, some of which were vetoed by former Governor John Bell Edwards. The bills expected to become law would bar teachers from using students' preferred pronouns, limit it which bathrooms and locker rooms they're allowed to use, and would broadly prohibit discussions about gender or sexuality in classrooms. By law, the session is set to wrap up on Monday at 6 p.m.